More to Marketing. Welcome to More to Marketing, a podcast on product marketing and everything in between. I'm your host, Susan, and I'm here with Tini. Tini here is a fabulous person who has done some magical things in her industry. And I find it absolutely amazing watching the growth of what she's doing with her hobby. But first off, I'm going to talk to her and find out exactly what she does today for her day job. So what do you do, Tini? Um, So as a day job, what I do is I'm a podiatrist as well as a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, but mainly I do acupuncture. And when I do that, it's all about um, helping people be able to move and feel better. But like, um, like yours from before we were having a chat, I, I like things to be quite raw. So raw being like, um, being authentic and being genuine, because I think from there, you're able to like, maybe give like a proper treatment because you fully understand, well, not fully understand, but like, you kind of get like a better understanding from where they're connected. Yes. Yeah, connected to what the like client or patient is coming from. And like when they feel that like they don't have to put a face on, mm-hmm. then like um they they're more willing to like, you know, open up and tell them really what's going on. And like you can make progress from there, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And yeah. being able to have that connection with your customer means that they're gonna have a better treatment with you too because yeah. they're also being their authentic self with you. Yeah, yeah. Now from this, I know that you have a side hustle slash hobby. I think this is more of a side hustle myself. Yeah. Uh, and and that's that's why we're actually talking today because I've been watching you before we even talked about this on social media and seeing these amazing images coming through. So yeah. what is this project that you've got going? Um. So like... Yeah, so I've been doing this, like, for, well, it's been, yeah, like a a hobby. Um, I make shoes and I make um, bags. Or, well, like, I only started making bags. But so I've been making shoes for quite a while. But, like, um, it's just been, like, something I do for fun. Yeah. Um, I haven't really, like, gotten into, like, the money side. It's still more, like, fun. I did do it one time, like, the money side, but it failed dramatically. <laughs> yeah and that's okay I think because like you know you can fail I think because from there you can actually maybe learn from something a little bit yes but um yeah so I think that's good because like um yeah you just like do something that's creative on the side I think mm-hmm. and yeah it's good you haven't you have you're underselling this the shoes they are sustainable they are um So with the shoes, like, okay, so with the shoes, sorry, I totally interrupted you, but like, um, (laughs) yeah, so with the shoes, like, they're, um, it's been a hard journey, the shoes, really, like, Mm. um, I price them at the, like, when, if I do make it into a hustle, I price it at the high, like, um, price, because, like, it's quite time consuming, and it's just made by me. And everything is like custom. So I have to go through all the processes. That's why it's so expensive. The other thing um, is like I do work also. So that's why mm-hmm. it's so expensive. Sustainable wise is I try to like make everything as waste free as possible. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so like when I say waste free is like um, with the shoes, it's more really like, yeah, try to make it waste free as possible. Like I try to reduce like I'll make it only if someone tells, like, puts an order in. So I'm not going to keep doing it over and over again. So I have, like, a whole bunch of, like, stuff, you know. And then um, with the totes, it's more, like, sustainable just because, like, um, I like to, like, get people to, like, reuse their old clothes so that you can make, like, into the totes. So that way it's, like, um, sustainable in that way. Yeah. Yeah. And the the beautiful thing about sustainability is, it's something we all need to do more of. Like mm-hmm. just some recent stats that I was reading before, I'll, I'll just read these out. One million plastic bottles are sold every minute. Yeah. One million plastic bottles every minute. And then five trillion pieces of plastic are floating around in the ocean. Mm-hmm. And that's just plastic. Yeah. We go into clothes. People are buying 
80 billion new pieces of clothing every year and 3.9 billion tons of food. But uh-huh. it's not it's not all being used. At least a third of it is being lost or wasted. So there is a huge consumer demand now for more sustainable lifestyle. And that's where you're coming in with this circular design and sustainable fashion mm-hmm. because that is what's on, it's on trend at the moment, but it's also what is needed. Mm-hmm. And that's why I thought it was really magical about your products you're designing. Yes, you're still at that beginning phase, which is super exciting, mm-hmm. but you're making custom, beautiful shoes, handmade and mm-hmm. sustainable and waste-free as possible per order. And that is just magical on its own. Mm-hmm. And then with the bags themselves, they're completely recycled recycled materials. Mm-hmm. And this is where you started talking about on your site about PETA, so P-E-T-A, about how um, it's it's certified there as well because of yeah. what you're I don't doing. have a site just yet. So everything is ordered through Instagram. Mm-hmm. So um, PETA approved being, um, yeah, it's like animal approved just because I have yeah. like a friend who is like, huge animal advocate and she was drilling me <laughs> she, was, she was like drilling me and I was just like oh my god yeah so uh, in that sense I was just like okay mm-hmm. if she is okay with it I think it should be fine but yeah. if anyone was to approach me to ask me more about the is it animal friendly or whatever I'm more than happy I'm very open for you to like come at me come at me <laughs> <laughs> ask questions okay. we love it yeah uh, so I'll ask you another one then so yeah. when you first decided because you, you love what you do for your job your podiatry and helping people and the medicine and everything what what was that tipping point that made you decide that you wanted to actually create your own product well um I've always actually been like creative but like the product side I always thought of that like from the beginning like even during like my studies and because like in high school I was more of the kind of like the weird um artsy person there's nothing wrong with that I was as well (laughs) yeah so yeah um, yeah. so um when I went into uni and then I was just like you know what like um podiatry everyone seemed to be like really not really like it's good I like it, the whole seriousness and everything. But like, um, I felt like my creative side was kind of like slumping. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, that's why I was just like, oh, I need to do, like, I feel like I'm going to go mad or like crazy. Need an outlet. Yeah. Because, you know, like everything is like, you know, you everything is so clinical and everything's like, yes. you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. And it's just like, oh my God, this is like killing me. You know, it's yeah. just like, everything is like, and it's just like some people, it's fine, you know, mm. it's like totally fine. And then like, um, yeah, so I just needed to do something like more creative. And I think that that's suited because like not only is it creative, but you have to like do all these measurements and all that. Okay, that's a bit tedious also, but like. <laughs> um, but that fits into your processes that you already know yeah. and you've established. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, that's right. And like um, you get that outlet where you can actually just like, do something that's like nice looking oh well yeah. at least like I don't know it's like a trial it's like a trial and error but it's like it's at least something that you can like let loose on sort of yeah yep so that's I why that. I like did that on the side yeah mm. and when you when you decided all this how did you come up with the name what what made you prompt for what you called yourself in the end yeah so my name at the mo- moment is called made by Gorby. So made by is because like I like to travel and like all my patients everywhere every time they ask me they're always like where do you practice or where do you work and they're always asking me I'm like I'm a little bit everywhere (laughs) and even like if I go traveling or something like um I'm always a bit like everywhere I don't stay in the same spot like well I I do but it's like it's very like ironic because like sometimes I'm like you know, very, you might say stoic, like I, yep. <laughs> I like this like heavy lump that's just like <laughs> sits there, refuses to do anything out of stubbornness or, you know, <laughs> so that or like other times I'm like, you can never get me because I'm just like anywhere, like or yep. everywhere. So that's why I said like, I didn't want to like 
put like a like hard thing so I was like made by and then like it could be and yeah you can sort of like see where I'm trying to head out but like I haven't like gone into that point yet so um the other part is like made by as in like do you know how usually it's like made in Australia or yes. made in Sydney or made in anywhere so it's something like that so you can sort of like maybe like but that's in the future but um the other thing is like so the gore b part is in i'm vietnamese and that's where i learned how to make shoes um so um thank you guys for letting me do that it's a bit like yeah anyway we'll tell that story later but yeah so i'm vietnamese and um that's where i learned like how to make shoes and as like a thank you to my culture and like the people who helped me like do everything. Um, oh my God, my nose is dripping. I have hate fever. Yeah, should I? No, it's fine. Yeah. Anyway, um, so as a thank you to like my culture and like the people who support me, my family, and like, even though my family can give me hell sometimes, I think that's what all families do. <laughs> yeah. so isn't, that why, isn't that the purpose? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, it's terrible. But you know whatever they're my family (laughs) yeah so um I can lend you my two hell raises it's okay uh, it's okay (laughs) I'm not ready for that (laughs) maybe in the future but not yet (laughs) yeah when they're they're potty trained I get it (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh my god yeah um yeah so like um yeah as a thank you to that so i Put the last part as the Vietnamese. Go is actually auntie or like um older like lady or something. So it's like go. It's like a like how we say miss missus or whatever. I'm a go because I'm not married yet or I'm not like super old, so I'm not Mac yet. I'm yep. just a go. And okay. B is like um my nickname in Vietnamese is B. So Aww. no one ever calls me like um teeny or anything. It's yep. like B. Like Aww. yeah. So that's a is that go B. So uh miss teeny but in vietnamese or auntie teeny in vietnamese yeah yeah so that's that's adorable i love that i absolutely love that and and what did um your family overseas think about that have heard about this um that's why i was saying it's a rough journey (laughs) oh my god yeah so um so like thank you to like my auntie also who like introduced me to like the shoemaking people but shoemaking in Vietnam and I think in a lot of cultures it's usually just for men so um yeah because it's a very like um I'll show you you don't oh yeah the hammer (laughs) see we're carrying this yeah and it's like a really like tough thing because like most of the shoemakers, you see, like, all of their stuff. So you see all the, like, the holes and everything. So the yep, last, yep. you like, do it. Like holder, yep, that. you put the shoe in, yep. Yeah, so all of that, yeah. It's very, like, hard, and you don't usually sit on a chair to do that. You have to actually sit on the floor to do it mm. because, like, I'll show you here. I, I've, see, I've seen that in your you. on your pictures as well, <sighs> if you're making it on the floor. I, yeah, so when you do it, like, um... I'm on the chair now, but I'll show you how you do it. So when you do it, you have to like hold the shoe, like the last, like into your like thing like oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So actually so put you, it between your thighs. Yeah. With the so heel pointing the out. Yeah. No, like the, it's like that. Yep. Yeah. Or you can turn it around wherever you do it, like mm-hmm. the nailing thing, like around here. That so looks like, quite yeah. dangerous because that, that hammer looks quite it is very sturdy hammer it's quite big yeah. and heavy and then to be smacking something that's around your thighs you really have to have precision there yeah so like you have to do that and you're like and yeah and you have to be really sturdy so see how like i'm sitting right now so my floor is a bit messy i try to clean it as much as i could no, 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 no. yeah so you see how like i'm sitting right and it's like that and i'm trying to do like this um yep. it's not very steady so when i do it it's like can move wherever so when yeah, you, you need you board, need something solid to support yourself yeah. and that doesn't swivel. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, you sit on the floor to like do it. Yeah. So like, when over there, they're always like, and it's like they they don't mean it in like a harsh way, but I think that they're like, this is a man's job because it's really mm. tough. You know, you have to sit on the floor, and yeah, over in Vietnamese culture, it's like white is really good. Mm-hmm. So it's like, um, it's very like go like. It's better to be white. 
Yep. Do you know what non, I mean? Non-tanned, it's, yep. Yeah, non-tanned. It's supposed to be like nice and... Yep, as fair as possible supposed, and compact. Yeah, fair. If it's like the, like, yeah, anyway. So they're like, if you, you're a girl and you're sitting on the floor and you're like hammering away and then you get calluses on your hands too. Oh. And they're just like, oh, I don't think this is a good profession for you. Not not ladylike enough. <laughs> yeah. Because like, um, like they, they care, like they care for you and they're just like, mm. we don't want you to like, you know, because it's kind of, it's going to make you look grotesque. And then um, but you know, but this is a passion and, and I don't mind it, but sometimes you have to like explain that to them. So that's yeah. why it was a little bit like it's of a tough. hard yeah journey there because like I had to like explain this so many times and they will be like mm. really resistant too because they're like, yep. we really don't think this is good for you. <laughs> yeah, it's that cultural boundary of yeah um they're not used to a female in this instance wanting yeah. to follow a passion piece that happens to be more of yeah. a male territory yeah. from from the cultural area that you've been from. Yeah, yeah, but it's that's like really things, interesting. Yeah, it's there's yeah, and that's why like um yeah, like you, like it's like um yeah, it's good like you you talk to them and it's like you learn this the different cultures behind mm. it and like why how people think and everything and it's like they don't mean like badly from it but it's just like oh my god <laughs> do you know because we're so used to like here we're so used yep. to like you know just doing it and it's like just following our passion and it's good but over there it's like no and it's like different like cultures and you just and you gotta understand that sometimes too and like if you go mm. over there because it's a different like um way of life also yes. um you like they have the thing is where you have to if someone says something you gotta like listen to it and like really respect that and if you go mm. against it it's a bit like yep. so it's yep. like okay yeah yep. so um that's why it was a tough journey <laughs> but yeah. you, you followed your passion you're doing something absolutely beautiful and gorgeous yes yeah, so I think you. it was definitely well yeah. worth it yes I think it's worth it too like it's fun <laughs> oh that's brilliant yeah <laughs> I just love that you're able to bring your cultural background into something that you love. What else inspired you on this journey? Like what brands do you look at now or cultures that you see that have been inspiring you to create your products? Um, it's, oh, sorry. I just, just putting the charter in. It's a bit like, I don't know about it. Anyway, but um, like uh, for me, it's not really about brand. It's mainly about like um, following your, I know it sounds very cliche, oh, my God, but like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like um, mainly just like following your passion. That's mm. why I'm doing this. Like if you want to do it and like why I could like, I could give up and like, you know, it's like very easy to give up, like very easy. But like why I keep like, even though if I'm not making money out of it or like, you know, there is like a demand for it, but even though I'm not putting it out there as much to make money for it, um, like I I still do it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's like because like even people keep telling you like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. It's like it's kind of like a stance where it's like, look, you're annoying me. <laughs> Stop giving me negative vibes. Yeah, positive ones, positive energy yeah. around me. And yeah, so I'm just gonna do it, you know. And it's like all about like even people who can't like if they keep doing all those things and like saying all those things, it's just like look, you can actually do it. Just keep doing it, and it's just funny to do it. Well, it's not funny, but it's just like you can just keep doing it, you know. And yeah. the other thing I wanted to like advocate like through like this label is that like um, what's it called? I want to show you too, like all about inclus- inclusivity and yes. like about like um, change that like you can change the dynamic of things. Say, for example, like brand- brands or whatever, they like show like you got to be a certain figure, you got to be a certain look. And so you saw on my Instagram made by Gorby, like teeny at the end because the other one was taken. So, <laughs> yeah. So um, you saw like I had like a model there who was like not your average model. And, you know, she still looked beautiful. You know, she was like standing there firm, looking her Marilyn Monroe way. And it was like, you look good, girl. 
you know it's a bit like exactly yeah and it was like looking a little bit like different and it's mm-hmm. fine you can totally do that with but, me but that's, <laughs> but that's what an everyday person looks like that's right yeah that's right that's- and that's what makes it even more beautiful because not only is it sustainable products, yeah, you're, not, you're going down the line of finding real people as well to showcase it. Yeah. And the, yeah. the pictures I love with the tote bag. Yeah. And that's good. The tote bags are good. That's a starting point too, just to like um, wean people in. So I think also what I wanted to like say too is like, do you know how like we're made to like, um, we're made to like, really idolize like people who look like a certain way etc but um you know like like on my like instagram like you saw that she's different looking and you know all of that and um i wanted to emphasize too the cost price and like if someone like who is you know able to afford that and you know, like they look like this too. Do you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. So it's like she it's can aspirational. Afford, yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like she she can afford it and she's beautiful. And you see her her beautiful is different from what you're made to like mm. like want to see is beautiful, you know? Like people always say, why did you put her up? <laughs> really? Like, why, yeah, they're like, why did you put her shoes on? You need to stop talking to those people. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. Like, you get a lot of, like, you get a lot of, like, input. But, like, like what you said before, like, um, you have to, like, good vibes only. <laughs> exactly. You know? And, and it's, so. it's, it's representing you. So yeah. this, this brand has got your name in it, even though people yeah. might not know that straight away because yeah. it is the yeah. Vietnamese um, slang for you. Yeah, yeah, it's you. So you have co- complete creative control about what you want to do out there in this universe, and that's what you're doing. You're taking control, which yeah. I love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. So that's the that's the label that I'm trying to like put up there. So yeah, not exactly a brand. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know if it's a brand, but I would say I like to call it a label because um, going on trend. <laughs> 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 yeah like they say there's so many like labels out there I don't really I can't even like you count like what's yep, it yep. called the, yeah so this is a label it's opening oh. up your business strategy about what you want to do in the future and you're keeping your doors open yeah <laughs> but what, what what did make you do the totes totes because okay that's that's a good one yeah so totes is like I look I was looking into doing a Louis Vuitton how yes. they started with like their how they started was like they did like um the huge like bags the luggage bags yep yeah yep. mine yep. isn't quite like that <laughs> <laughs> it does look quite large though <laughs> yeah oh well, where is I don't know where it is but like um yeah so what's she called so why the tote is because like I like to me I don't like to waste things like I don't know about you but like I don't like to waste things so like the tote you can use it for like shopping you can put it anything you want go to the beach so again like you're reusing it it's not something like the stuff that I make I hope like it's not something you just make to like use once like I want I want people to keep using it like keep using it it's fine (laughs) you know and it's like it looks okay and like you can go shopping and just bring bring it to shopping and it's like yeah it's I don't know it's just good yeah it could be perfect for me because I'm sure very soon I'm gonna have some nice clothing that gets destroyed in some way shape by one of the boys okay and instead of getting rid of the whole outfit I could then send it to you or to. talk with you and yeah. have something made out of it that I can repurpose and reuse so a small yeah. a bag out of it or something yeah I'd be happy to do that um I'll take pictures of you too <laughs> <laughs> with the yeah. boys fighting over the bag I love it yeah oh yeah but, that was good but, yeah. but I, I love that idea of a lot of people have those pieces in their wardrobe that they love or they can't fit into anymore or, mm-hmm. or it's or it's some um, yeah it, it could even be something as simple as a wedding dress or something. Yeah. Have, yeah. How to repurpose instead of just making a christening dress. Yeah. Depending on the pattern and everything. Oh, that's to a great make idea. a bag. 
Yeah, that's yeah, that's a huge good idea. Re like revamping your wedding dress into a christening dress. That's perfect. Mm. Uh, but yeah, no, that was the idea. Like, like just not like waste clothes or like you can put it into the mini stuff but if you love it like heaps like well, why don't you just make it into a bag so you can keep it forever oh well you don't have to keep it forever but like you know you get more to- life out of it so you get yeah. more love out of it I love it because a lot of these yeah. things it's you, you fall in love with that pattern or that design or even who it was made originally made yeah. from when we go to labels yeah you can they repurpose it into something to give it more life with you that's right yeah that's right so um yeah I like that Mm. And, and that's why I do love this circular design and sustainable fashion that's now out there because you're stopping some landfill, but you're also yeah. getting something out of it that you love. Uh-huh. And then for you, yeah. you're actually getting something to make and create and get that that mm-hmm. energy that you haven't been able to get in the everyday. You're able to put your arts and your creativity and all of that yeah. to work. And do you know what, too? And I think that it's good because, like, um. There's actually a lot of like um, artists or like people around like locally is they may not like, well, me too, like they may not have like the platform to talk or something, but then they make really beautiful stuff too. And it's just like, um, it's just not out there yet. And like, you know, you go to the market, some of the stuff, okay, some of the stuff is, oh, it's really nice, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just like, wow and it's like you know you know so it's I think that that's like and they have to they also market at like a pretty like high thing most of their stuff too is sustainable also because Mm -hmm. they're making it not as like a huge mass production it's they're making it out of like passion they're making it you know and I think this is a good like show your stuff it's good (laughs) you know what I mean so um I think that that's good like you can totally do that yeah and like again, um, yeah, I like to just like with my thing, like I like to like just make sure, like not make sure, but like just show people that it's all about um if you have like a dream or like an idea that you want to do, you can totally do it. Like don't ever like whatever obstacle that you have, just keep pursuing it. And then whoever mm-hmm. wants to pull you onto their team or whatever and try to like sway you to like make certain things their way or whatever you just stand your ground babe and just do it like just do like what you want to do yeah well not even be a boss but stand in your own values Mm -hmm. (laughs) and like because that's how like you get from like um because I've been watching all these stuff like too I don't know why I keep watching them but like (laughs) that's how you get like um do you know how like you get those fashion designers they're really beautiful to begin with Mm. and then after like once they get like um really good and like um they get more popular and stuff they start to lose that like um you know it kind of starts to get like getting dull and why it gets dull is because people like who think they know better like um is like kind of like directing them of like mm. what they should do and it's kind of like and then like the the artists too of course they want to like you know excel in their like field and really climb up the ladders etc they because they want to get that too like um and which is okay like you have to like move up the ladder as you go that's fine that's normal <laughs> but, yeah, you know but it's, it's dampening that creativity that yeah. was there to be yeah. what's on trend or what the they believe yeah. the trend is from these yeah. people influencing them yeah which is it's okay to like you know get but it's just yeah it's like stand your ground like especially yep. at the beginning stage just like stand your ground so that way like uh, that's oh my god Susan that's like a like thing too like it's not a feminist thing but like I think like oh my god this is so true like this is like do you know like Susan like you you've worked a lot in the corporate world yep. um I think this is also important to like um in the fashion thing like people or not fashion but yeah fashion <laughs> like people this example keep, yep yeah they keep like swaying you to one side blah 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 but you got to stand like strong to what you believe what your values are and um what is it and like thing too with like women uh, women in like the corporate or whatever world the thing is people think that we're not strong enough so like they think that you have to listen to me and mm. then like do you know what I mean and it's like they really like try to 
And if you don't, you don't get, and it's harder for us because for some reason we have to prove ourselves more, you know? So if, say for example, one person says, like, or if say for example, one guy, right, who may not have been in it for long or anything, they say something, suddenly everyone's like, yep, we're on board. Yep, let's go. Let's just do it. But as women, like, um, and it's sad to say that, even in Australia, sorry, guys, <laughs> but this is the reality. Um, even if, like, we're, you know, we got a good position, right? Um, we have, like, um, you know, good, like, things. Even as we're going out, we have to prove ourselves more. Like, the other guy, he says something and it's good. Let's get on board, you know? But for us, we have to prove and prove and prove and prove and prove mm. our value. And it's, like, that we're solid and that we're good. You know, we have to prove that constantly. Whereas the other person, you don't, they didn't have to go through that pro- whole process. And it's just like, you know, I think this is why it's like, again, the shoe thing. It's like, look, if I say I'm not going to do that design, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> because like I told you, this is like my limit for now. And like, this is what I'm doing, you know. And if you don't like it, then so be it. Like, and that's yeah, and that's why people. and that's why this brand is representing you. It's your yeah. values, your beliefs put into it, so that yeah. you produce something that you know in your heart is part of yeah. that passion piece that, yes. that you're proud to have out there to represent you. Yeah, yes, and I think it's important. Like you just like I don't know. Like I th- I see it as like uh, I I don't know. It's like um, how do you say it? It's my maybe rebellious. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I don't think that's how you meant it to, to be when it's, you first were discovering though, because you no. fell into podiatry and you love it. And this is yeah. the creativity piece coming off what you do every day. Yeah. Because you see all those problems people are going through with shoes out there. So you're solving yeah. a problem as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, to start off, that it was like that. But then it just happens to now that you can have some fun with it too at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So to start off, it was like, yeah, like that. Like like the people who can't wear shoes properly, oh, well, no, you know, so I could do that. Or even like just to make something nice looking. And it's like, oh, I made that. And then now I think we're like going into the real world and then like you just like see what's actually out there and you're like, oh, God, okay. Don't tell me no. I'm going <laughs> to oh, keep going. Yeah. You're going to keep going. I love that. Yeah. Um, and and that, I suppose that helps you as well with your social media about how you're positioning yourself. So what do you do on social media and how do you make yourself stand out? Well, I think um, that's a good question. Um, I think it's not like, okay, yeah, you can like make yourself stand out. But I think once you start saying that um, I need to do something to make me stand out, like I think that's where we're going wrong. Make, oh, well, not wrong, but like it's totally – fine but I think like um uh with marketing or social media I think it's like stick to who you are the authentic like, part yeah yeah I think that's the, yeah you're right like the authentic part like um yeah stick to who you are stick to the values of your label or like you know your brand and um and from there do not sway <laughs> everything do not sway so just this is from stick. product all the way through to what you represent yourself on social media. Don't yeah. sway, stand firm. Yeah, do not sway ever. Like, I guess I'm very stubborn. Like, this is like the, this is the label. Like, you know, if I'm saying that this is who I am, this is who I am, you know? Like, stop trying to change my identity. This is who I am, you know? And I am fine with who I am. Do you see her? She's beautiful. <laughs> she looks different. <laughs> You know, she's, there's and nothing she's fine. wrong with that at all. No, the beauty and the product all. and everything coming together. Yeah, and this, that's the thing too. And like with custom, we all know, like it's custom. It's like specific to you. You know, this is the label. It's specific to you. Yeah, so all it's custom like, made. Yeah, so it's specific. So if it's specific, everyone is unique. Yep. You know, everyone is unique. So like. Why do you want to like hammer everyone down to look the same? Like everyone is different. Like everyone is different in their own way. Like, you know, like, yeah. Like, and like even, and why people think like um, 
and I think this is with society too like why people are like depressed and like their whole mental illness or everything around that is like why people are so like sad or like all of this is because like they they don't feel appreciated they don't feel acknowledged and it's and like they they want to like strive to look or be a certain way mm, do you know what I mean yeah. and it's like no you don't have to be a cer- any certain way you'll find the way you are you know you're seriously you're fine be like, unique be bespoke stand out for yes, yourself that's right yeah that's oh my god that's a yeah that's perfect thank you <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful yeah. <laughs> yeah but like, use it as your phrase I'm fine <laughs> yeah you're fine and it's like like you say like people I don't know people like like in my my age because like you know podiatry like and this, is, this is oh my god Susan this is the thing that I love about like my job I know it sounds terrible that I keep saying that but like this is the thing why I love podiatry so much is the main audience who are like who I work with in podiatry is really old people, like, you know, the elderly. So like, um, yeah. and the thing why I love about them is before I used to work in aged care too. So I stopped working that for a bit now. Yeah. I like last year just because it was too much. I burnt out. I, I'm in a, I'm in a relaxing stage now. Anywho, but I love that place. And um, the thing that I love about working with old people or the elderly is because they absolutely did not care. They've been through all that. And this is also why, like, in the label, I, I don't want to strive to, like, have, you know, a certain look or anything. Just be yourself, you know. Yeah. And why I love, like, working in like, and why I'm trying to bring this to, like, the Made by Gobi is because, you know, like, and why I love my job is because my the clients or patients that I see, they, they accept me wholly for who I am, you know. And I accept them and they do, they do not care like at all. Like, you know, sometimes we can't, they, sometimes they can't hear me. <laughs> yeah. Most they are time, older. So it makes sense. Yeah. They can't hear me. Sometimes they can't understand me. So I do have, I had to learn how to talk a bit slower. I like to articulate my words, but um, so sometimes they don't understand me or like, um, and like, what's it called? Um, and sometimes I don't understand them because they can't speak English or like but it's fine they totally like you know they're they're totally accepting and like they just don't care you know like and like it's just it's just genuine because they're just at the stage where they just don't care like yeah it's really good I love them yeah (laughs) and they're really nice yeah yeah I like them I love that I love that not only is just passion of the audience and your target and who you work with as well, just inspires you more. So mm-hmm. I love and, that. Yeah. And it's like, they're always like really nice because they're always like, they just, they just let you be who you are, you know? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's really good. And I think that that's a trouble these days. Oh, not these days. Oh my God. I sound like an old person too. <laughs> 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 that's that's the trouble it's like um because nowadays people are like they feel like they it's like yeah oh my god it's like they feel like um people feel like they're not allowed to be themselves do you know what I mean like mm. they feel into like boxes. They, yeah yeah and like even if they want to be themselves they're uncomfortable because mm. they're like uh I feel shy or like embarrassed like to go out presenting like this because it's like I have to be a certain way or you know and it's just like and then like there's the insecurity and there's the competition and there's the jealousy and all of that and it's just like just be yourself it's fine oh my god it's like at the end of the day no one really cares like really like have you ever like they're gonna forget about it five minutes after they see you so why dwell on it be happy yeah. with be happy with who you are and yeah. what you wear and mm. make sure you're comfortable as well. Yeah, that's right. I like that. Mm. So yeah. I'm gonna ask you the final question I ask everybody. Mm-hmm. If you could be a brand, any brand, what brand would best represent you and why? Um oh she's thinking tick 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 um I don't think 
Um, at the moment, I don't think there's any brand that I like. Um, actually, there was one brand that I like. It was um, an Australian one. Do you remember Fossil? Yes. Yeah. Did watches and I believe clothing too. I remember and, they did and shoes bags. and belts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like um, I, I like their stuff because it's quite like, um, yeah, it's very like raw. It's very mm-hmm. like, um, and it's quite, it's a different design. Yes. Like it's like, and it's very sturdy. Um, that, and I don't want to be that, that brand. I just like admire, like yep. I think th- these are the brands that I admire or like that mm-hmm. I like. So I like um, Bustle mm-hmm. and I like Q. Yeah, yeah, Q. Is that an Australian one too, maybe? I I actually don't don't know know. whereabouts um, it sits right now because lots of companies keep being bought by other companies, so I can't quite keep up. That's terrible. That's terrible. I I don't know, it's fine. But, yeah, I like um, Fossil um, because they're, like, it's very, like, sturdy. And then, like, even, like, the zippers that you use, it's so smooth Mm -hmm. and, like, um, like, and it's really nice. It's very sturdy. I like it. Do you know how like you sometimes you feel something? And you're like, damn, this is. Quality. Yeah, it's gonna last. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. that. And um, Q again, I like that because it's like. Mm. <laughs> you feel you feel that special feeling when you when you've bought it. Yeah, it's and just when like, you wear it. Yeah, it's it's nice. Uh, and it feels it's like it's nice. It's like so crisp, and it's like yep. it's nice. I like that. Um, and. The other one is so cute, fossil, and the other one I like is Uniqlo. I really love Uniqlo. It's very like um, what's it called? Uh, I'd almost call it eclectic. Eclectic. What's that? Oh, sorry. Uh, what's all, that? all all different things. Yeah. Um, oh, for yeah. E- for everybody, like a kaleidoscope kind of thing, where yeah, yeah, it, it's one shop, but there's so much there, and yeah. it can and it goes through for some di- lots of diversity as well. Yeah, that's yeah. what I think when I think of them. Yeah, I like them too. Yeah. Yeah, those are. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tini, for today. I've learned so much. In particular, stand your ground to be authentic when you're chasing your dreams and also continue that through from product development all the way through to what you post on your socials because this is you and being authentic and standing your ground is a big stamp of who you are as well. Mm -hmm. And, And I love the idea of the the hobby of sustainability becoming a side hustle in the future. And last but not least, let's do one final shout out. What is your tag again on Insta? It is made by Corby. So M-A-D-E-B-Y underscore Corby. So C-O-B-I teeny. So T-H-I-E-N-Y. Let me just double check that. No, I will add it to the end of this podcast in the description so no one misses out on it. Thank you so much again for your time today. I've absolutely loved this. And everybody continue to listen to more podcasts. Don't forget to follow and we'll catch up very soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Susan. More to marketing.